In this little video I'm going to be talking about analogies and for analogies for electrical circuits and here is the, the standard water analogy. So we have a pump and this is water flowing along the pipe. It comes down here and it splits and goes in two directions and through narrow bits of pipe which represent our resistances. So if I were to draw this out as an electrical circuit, what would I have? Well, I have a, a cell which represents the pump. I have a wire which represents the pipe. I'd have a resistor which represents the narrow piece of pipe or is analogous to. I've got another resistor because here I have two pieces of pipe in parallel. This is a bit like a heating circuit in a house. A pump pumps water around the house and the water has to flow through the different radiators. They're all wired in parallel so you can switch each radiator off individually. In the same way you can put a switch here or here to switch each of these resistors off. Anyway, back to our analogy. If I wanted to measure the um, analogies, the analogy of current, I'd be measuring flow rate. So I could put a flow meter maybe just in here. Okay, so this is a flow meter. And you see that you actually have to put it physically in the pipe and let the water flow through it in the same way that if I were to put an ammeter in my circuit, I would have to put it in there and you have to physically actually put it into your circuit. And if I were to put a flow meter here, then I would expect that the flow passing through that flow meter would be the same as the flow passing through that flow meter. You can't have less water going in than coming out. So that shows you why the current is the same at all points in this part of the circuit. In the same way that you can't have more water going in than coming out, you can't have more electrical current going into a cell than comes out of it. Where does it all go if that's the case? Okay, the next part of this analogy looks at how the current behaves in a circuit. So if we have um, a current coming along our circuit here, and we'll call it I1, this is equivalent to this one here, I1, and at this junction here it's going to split up, so let's say summit goes that way, I2, and let's say summit goes this way, I3, we can see what the relationship is because the water that comes down here this amount of water coming here, some of it goes this way, some of it goes this way, but this water plus this water must add up to this water. So we can see the current going into the junction, I1, must equal the current coming out of the junction, I2 and I3, which is one of the circuit laws. Anal um, analogies are very good for some things. This analogy is very good for looking at how current flows in pipes. Uh, what do we have as our analogies here? For pipes are analogous to wires. But analogies also sometimes fail, because if I were to break one of these pipes, then the water would all fall out. So if I had a crack, the water would all flow out of the pipe. And that doesn't happen in an electrical circuit. When you have an electrical circuit, if you break the wire, the electrons don't all fall out. Why not? Well, you have to look at what's the difference. What does the analogy not do? In our water circuit, the water droplets are not charged, so they're free to leave. In our electrical circuit, these water droplets represent electrons. The electrons are charged. If one electron leaves, the wire then is positive, and the electrons are attracted back, so they can't escape in very simple terms. So this analogy is good for talking about current. It allows us to understand the current laws. This is a water analogy, which is good for looking at voltage rather than current and it can be slightly confusing so you have to think about it very clearly. So here we have a pump and the pump represents an electrical cell. So here is my cell and what a pump does in this case is it's giving the water in the circuit which represents our charge carriers, our electrons flowing through pipes which represent wires. It gives our charge carriers, it gives them height and here we have them gaining a height H1 and this is equivalent to our charge carriers in a circuit gaining a voltage or an EMF. So we could put some new numbers on here. So for example, they might gain, I don't know, arbitrarily seven volts. We might have a seven volt cell. Bit unusual, but there you go. This big tank of water at the top here has nothing to do with the electrical analogy. It just It's more realistic if this is a water circuit, you would have a tank of water. So we're going to ignore that part of it. So the water now flows along a pipe, which represents a wire and then it goes down this narrow pipe, this restriction, which represents some resistance of some description, 
And part of the analogy, which I quite like here, is that you require a change in height to cause the water to flow through this narrow pipe. If the both ends of this pipe were at the same level, the water wouldn't flow through them. Okay, so as you can see here, the water's gained a height h1, it's gained an EMF of 7 volts, it's lost the same height h2 in going down through the, um, the, narrow, the narrow pipe, the resistor, and then it comes back along to the pump up to there. So this represents a cell, and this represents a resistor of some description, and this represents a wire which has no resistance because when water goes along the wire, it's not losing any height. It doesn't require any voltage, any potential difference to make current flow through that wire. This decrease in voltage, this voltage needed to drive the current through this narrow pipe is given a different name. It's called a potential difference. And in this case, we can see that the potential difference is the same. It's seven volts. However, our circuit is not yet complete because water can also go this way. And here we have two drops, one followed by another with a flat part in between. So in our electrical circuit, this is an analogous to having two resistors, one after another, like this. And each of these has their own potential difference. You can see the potential differences aren't necessarily equal. It's not necessarily an equal split. So in this case, H4 is bigger than H3. So if we look at the num numerical values. This might, for instance, be 3 volts, and this might be, for instance, 4 volts. But what you can see quite clearly is for whatever height you gain here, you have to lose along the way. So if I gain the height here, whichever way I go, if I go this way or if I go this way, I have to lose all of that height going through one resistor, or I have to lose all of that height in two steps going through those resistors, going through those pipes. In the same way here, if I have an EMF of 7 volts, so I gain 7 volts worth of energy, to use very incorrect terminology. When the current flows through this resistor, it must lose that 7 volts worth of energy and get back to the start of the circuit again. If, it, if the current goes this way instead, it must lose the same amount, but it can lose in two steps, which don't have to be equal, a 3 and a 4. So this analogy is quite nice for thinking about how voltages add up in a circuit. Basically, if we look here, we've got, if we talk about the heights, then delta H1, which remember is the EMF, is what we're talking about, is equal to, in, if we go along this route, it's equal to delta H3, which is a potential difference, plus delta H4, which is also a potential difference, which gives us the voltage laws. The EMFs in the circuit must add up to the potential differences. It doesn't matter which route I take. If I've gone down this route instead, then or because you can't do both, delta H1, if the, if the water chooses to go this way instead, equals delta H2. But notice in this case, the EMF in the circuit still add up to the potential differences in that particular route. So you have to consider one particular route when you're talking about whether voltages add up. This is an analogy which talks about coal trucks to represent an electrical circuit. So believe it or not, these are not small ants walking along the page. They are actually my attempt to draw coal trucks driving along a road. And in this analogy, the coal trucks, that's these things here, represent the charge carriers, the electrons, and the road, in this case, represents the wire, the thing the charge carriers move along. And all of these trucks are moving, so we'll give them a direction. We'll say they're all moving in this direction, and we're all going that way. Now, something has to make them move, well, the reason that they move is because they're coal trucks, so they like to carry coal. So at the top of the page, we can draw our very stylized coal mine. And what that means is that as the coal trucks come out, they can fill up with coal from the coal mine. Now, the coal mine, of course, has its own analogy. It's analogous to a, an electrical cell. So if in the middle of a circuit, we draw our cell. There it is. Okay, and that means that the coal trucks that have passed through the coal mine must already be full of coal, which means the electrons that are traveling along out of the cell have electrical energy. Now we want those electrons to do something useful, but the first thing we're going to do is we're going to measure them. We're going to put an ammeter in the circuit. In our coal truck analogy, what would the ammeter be? Well, it would be a workman standing by the side of a road with a clipboard 
like this, writing things down, and a stopwatch. That's a stopwatch icon, by the way. And he's a very happy little person. And what he does is he counts the number of trucks each hour. I could say per second to make it the same units as electrical current, but you wouldn't get very many trucks a second unless they were moving dangerously fast. So let's have trucks per hour. So this might be 100 trucks per hour, which would represent a current of 100 amps, 100 charge carriers per second in that case. So this is the equivalent of our ammeter, a little man counting trucks. The ammeter is a, a device which counts charge carriers. Now we're going to have some use for our call. So what we'll do first of all is we'll have a house over here and it's the middle of winter so we need to provide some coal to keep the children warm so what happens is the coal trucks go past and they each give out some of their coal so they only have a little bit of coal left it's a very expensive house to run okay they have about three quarters of their coal left in them there like that and this is very happy it has smoke coming out the chimney because it's keeping nice and warm if i had a red pen i'd glow it glowing red but i don't now the next thing we're going to do is see what that's analogous to. Well, that's going to be analogous to some resistor. It doesn't require very much coal, and therefore this is quite a low value resistor. You don't have to expend much energy to go past this house. You don't have to expend much voltage to go through that low value resistor. Now, the next thing we're going to come across is something which is a bit more energy hungry, so we'll call it a factory. Put a chimney on the end there. Lots of windows, lots of workers. They want to do lots of stuff, lots of smoke coming out the top like this. Okay, so what happens here is that the coal trucks come along and they use up all of their remaining coal, and these coal trucks are all now empty. Notice how in this analogy, this one's getting filled up because it's going through the coal mine. Notice how in this analogy, none of the coal trucks are used up, and therefore, in our electrical circuit, none of the charge carriers are used up. What is used up is the energy that they carry with them. And used up is a very poor, loose terminology, but let's stick with that for now. Now, if we put some units on this, then let's say that each coal truck here has, let's say, 10 tons of coal in each truck. That seems reasonable. And our house uses two tons of coal per truck. So two tons goes out there. And the factory, therefore, if the trucks have to return empty, and we started with 10, and this one uses two, then this one must use up eight tons of coal. And that's analogous to our voltages. So our cell has an EMF of 10 volts. It provides 10 joules of energy to each charge carrier. And our first resistor has a potential difference of two volts because it uses up two of those uh, 10 volts, two tons out of the 10 that were loaded into the trucks. And the other resistor, of course, uses up the remaining eight volts. And these two have to agree to use the, the 10 tons of coal equally between them. This one needs more. The trucks have to provide more coal to get through the factory so they can give less to the house. Could we measure voltages? Could we draw a voltmeter in this analogy? Well, yes, we could. We could draw another little person here with a, uh, a measuring device of some description, some scales. I don't know how to draw scales, so draw as a box. We have another little guy here, and he has some scales. And what they do is they measure, they have a little look, and they measure how much is in each truck. So let's see what they're going to report. Well, this guy is going to say, well, in the trucks before they get to the house, we have 10 tons of coal. And this guy is going to say, in the trucks when we leave the house, we have 8 tons of coal. But what we're actually interested in is the difference, which is equal to the 2 tons of coal. Okay, so the potential difference here, this one here is called a potential difference, is the difference between the 10 and the 8 there. If we have another little person here, with his measuring device of some description, looking at these trucks, saying, well, these ones, these are completely empty. They have zero tons. Zero tons of coal. So here their difference is... eight tons so this corresponds to a potential difference of eight volts so this analogy is very good for looking at how charge carriers flow around the circuit it's very good for looking at why the charge carriers aren't used up but what they carry around with them is used up although used up is a poor terminology it's showing us that a voltage is actually a difference in energy 
So it's the difference between here and here is 2 volts, the difference between here and here is 8 volts, the difference between here and here is 10 volts. So if we drew our people on up here, then of course this one would be saying 0 tons and this one would be saying 10 tons. But in this case the trucks have gained energy, so it's an EMF, which is what cells do. Here, the trucks have given up some of their coal, they've lost energy, so this is a potential difference. And finally, the ammeter is somebody counting the trucks per unit time. This is an analogy of an electrical circuit, which is incredibly hard to draw, because this is what I normally do in my classroom live with my students. So these small ant-like things represent my students, not that I'm saying my students look like ants, of course. And I set up a circuit where I have a big bucket here full of sweets, and I have a pathway around the classroom, around one of the desks, and here is a bucket to collect sweets, and I have another pathway down here, and I have another couple of buckets each needing to collect sweets. And what I do is I say that the students have to walk around the circuit that I've set for them, we'll go in this direction, and they'll come back along there and back up there. And what happens is that as they go past the bucket, then they take out some sweets. So this person here needs to have their little sweets. They've gone from the bucket onto them. This person's collected a couple. This person's just collected one. But these guys that are coming along this way, they don't have any sweets yet because they've not really arrived anywhere near the bucket. Now you can see where this analogy is going. What's going to happen is that my bucket of sweets represents a cell. And what it's doing, it's providing something to the charge carriers. In this case, it's providing three. So this is like a cell which has an EMF of three volts because it's providing three units of energy for each charge carrier. If I were to talk in electrical terms, then the units of energy would be joules and the charge carriers would be coulombs of charge. So here we have our students walking around the circuit. If I wanted to measure the current in this analogy, then I would stand here as the teacher, very stern face with my little flat mortarboard on and etc etc and what would I need to do that with well I'd need to have a stopwatch and probably a clipboard to write on like this and I would count the number of students per minute and that would be equivalent to my current which of course in standard units is measured in coulombs per second but it doesn't matter it's unit of charge carriers per unit of time so here I am measuring current and it wouldn't matter whether I stood here or here or here or here I would measure the same number of students per minute because my instruction to them is don't all bunch up into a bunch they have to stay equally spread out so in my circuit this is like adding an ammeter where the teacher's standing that's me and then the circuit branches and the buckets represent resistors now why do the buckets represent resistors well the reason is because you have to provide some of your sweeties in the analogy or energy in an electrical circuit to be able to go past them so as this student here approaches this bucket he has to toss his sweeties into the bucket like this and he's only got two left and this one's tossed his in already so he's only got one left and this one's thrown all of his in so this bucket's got a few sweets in as these couple of people have gone past and you have to do the same thing down here now this person's just thrown one in there but he has to be a bit careful he can't throw all of his sweets into this bucket because he's still got to get past this bucket now this bucket may only require one sweet, this is a one sweet bucket, and this one's a two sweet bucket, and this is a three sweet bucket. So to get past this bucket, you have to chuck three sweets in. So if you go that way, you use all of your sweeties, and you turn back to the source with none. So therefore, this is equivalent to having a potential difference of three volts. This one here is a one sweet bucket, so this guy here still has two sweeties, and here he has one sweet left because he's just thrown one in, and this guy has no sweeties here at all because he's thrown his two in. So this bucket should have two for every one of these. So I'll draw three in there and six in there. One, two, three, six in there. Okay, so what we've got here is this one's going to be equivalent to one volt because it only requires one sweetie to go past. And this one's equivalent to two volts because it requires two sweeties to go past. And my charge carriers move back around the circuit up to here. And what the analogy is aiming to show is that it's not the charge carriers that are used up, but it's the thing that the bucket at the top is providing. So when my cell goes flat, it's not because it's run out of electrons to move around the circuit, but it's run out of energy to give those electrons as they move around the circuit. 
Okay, now could I, in my analogy, have something to measure voltage? Well, yes, I could. I could have a couple of student volunteers. Here's one. And I've asked them to call out how many sweets each person has. So this guy has three because he's saying, I can see you, you have three sweets. And I could have another student volunteer over this side. And he's having a good look. And he says, well, these guys have zero. They've used them all up. And what I'm really interested in is the difference. So the difference between here and here is three sweets. So that's a potential difference of three volts. Three volts potential difference there. Three volts potential difference there. Three volts EMF there. Three volts EMF there. Three volts potential difference there. Three volts potential difference there. And the number of sweets clearly shows that these two voltages have to add up to that voltage. These two potential differences must add up to that EMF like that because these charge carriers have to give up what they gain from the cell. Like all analogies, it has its issues because, of course, in reality, the students would eat the sweets and the buckets would remain empty, but it shows you why cells go flat.